Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to another video in which I'm going to answer a question that I often get from students and other folks who are just joining industry on what project you should work on. Or in other words, ideas for projects to improve your programming skills. And I'm actually going to cheat here a little bit and reference an excellent blog post by Austin Henley. So I want to give him credit for this, who is a professor uh, previously and now is at uh, Microsoft, it looks like, who wrote this uh, excellent post on just challenging projects every programmer should try. Now, I should go ahead and say that these projects might be challenging, or there's ways that these projects can also scale for beginners. So if you're just looking for projects to start learning, I'll try to give you a few ideas here. But what I've noticed from this list, and I'll give a few comments on this excellent blog post, which lists some ideas as well as resources on how to get started with this, is many of these things on this list are tools that we use either as programmers or just in our day-to-day -day life on computers or apps. And I think that's really important because it removes some of the friction in terms of having to design something from scratch. For instance, if you're used to using Vim or Emacs or VX code or whatever, you have an idea of what a text editor should do. Maybe be able to save a file, write some characters, reload them, and that's your basic functionality there. So now you can actually think about or start researching how to do that, whether through this blog post, Google, or again, just trying to sketch out some of the functions that you might need for whatever programming language that you're actually using. So I really like the sense that this list has many of these ideas. And again, that's an easy way to get some inspiration. For example, this web browser that I'm looking at how is that built? What's it actually doing? Well, fundamentally, it's just downloading some HTML and rendering it. So then you can think about how I display characters and all sorts of interesting things, what frameworks exist, and that'll take you on a little bit of a journey. So just being curious and trying to recreate some of the tools that you use is an excellent thing to do. Now, some of the other projects that I really like on this list, um, of course, because I have a bias towards game programming, building 2D games. In fact, you can just search classic Atari games if you want. You'll come up with a full list. And again, you'll see this uh, program that's already been made, and then you can try to recreate it. Now, with games especially, it's interesting because they're usually quite non-trivial in terms of the structure of the program. It makes you think about things like how to arrange your data and transform your data. That's essentially what a game's doing. And you might even have to think about things like constraints as far as how fast you're drawing something. Now, for a simple game like this, you should be able to do this on a modern computer with no problem. But again, you can start thinking about optimization, using a profiler, which is a great skill to have, and debugging when something goes wrong in the game. So along with building the project, some of the tooling that goes around with it is actually really important. So this is why it can be useful to have a side project, for instance, as you're learning or building up your portfolio. So I really like this idea of having games here. Now, some of the other ones here might be uh, quite good challenges here, and I'll let you read about those, uh, but things like compilers. So again, building a programming language, or even just thinking about how to parse out a sentence. Maybe a fun idea here, rather than building a full programming language, is just to say, can I take a, a post from social media and identify a bunch of uh, words that are sort of positive or phrases or negative and see what the sort of sentiment of a post is. That could be sort of an interesting exercise and a start to parsing and learning how to work with text. And then you could try something like a little tiny basic here. And Austin actually has some excellent resources for that as well. Now, some of these other ones are a little bit more advanced, but I think they're great exercises in systems and thinking about what's going on. You might even just think about pieces of these things, like how memory is allocated in an operating system, for instance, and that might lead you down an investigation of what a system call is or some of these interesting things and how they get implemented. It'll at least improve your mental model if you decide that, hey, this is something that I'm really interested in. And in my mind, none of these projects, however challenging you think they are, are off limits. Again, start small and scale your way up. That's part of doing the project, learning how to take a really big problem and work on tiny pieces of it that you can actually accomplish. So this is a great list by Austin, and he even has another great post here that follows along on more challenging projects that programmers should try. And the one that I particularly like here, Ray Tracers, for those of you who've been following my graphics series will know that uh, graphics is just an awesome field and being able to see something visual is excellent. And Austin also recommends the book that I've used in my courses, which is Ray Tracing in One Weekend, which has all the code here. But as I scroll through these free books here, you'll see that, again, there's a source code. And if I go ahead and click on it, and if I scroll here, it's not too long. It really is a project you can complete in a weekend by, let's see, about three pages, you're already displaying an image like this. So I like that visual feedback. 
And again, it leads you to questions like, how do I debug something that's visual? How do I know it's correct? How could I log halfway through what this process is doing? How do I work with file formats to display an image? So again, with these projects, there's all sorts of interesting stuff here. So again, I like the idea of gray tracers. So those are just, again, some of these projects here that I think are really good. If you're interested in stocks, again, picking something that you're interested in and doing a stock trading bot, again, don't risk your money, <laughs> but maybe do something on you know historical data here uh, that might be fun and it might lead you to visualizations and some other you know interesting avenues, how to work with lots of data, or even how to just think about how does an electronic trading system work? And then you might learn some things that are just interesting. It's great to be interested in this stuff. So um, some other things that I was just thinking about while doing this, again, is sometimes you might not find a great tutorial for uh, one of these particular resources here. Now, these ones are pretty common that Austin has um, and are documented through courses and these types of things. But um, when it comes to uh, some of these projects, one resource that I actually liked and I kind of use as an example from Unity 3D for graphics, um, or you could look at uh, Epic's Unreal Engine or Godot or any of these engines here, and usually they have a learn uh, section here. So sometimes it's actually interesting, even though I don't do a lot of C Sharp these days, which is what Unity 3D does, is to find tutorials in different languages and translate them into the language that you're using. Maybe it's Dlang or C++ or C or whatever the language is. And sometimes that process itself can be a little bit of a learning experience. So maybe it is just implementing one of these uh, games, which might be in assembler or basic and translating it to your other language. That can also be a very useful exercise and a useful project. In fact, that's sometimes what we just have to do in the real world, translate a framework into uh, a language that we understand or are using. So I just thought that was interesting, and I thought there, there's so many great resources that when trying one of these projects, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the exact language. So if you don't find an exact match for how to build a ray tracer in C++, you might find something that is close, uh, and to just look at these learn uh, websites from tools like this, and this example, of course, is specific to gaming. Now, a few other examples that I thought would be interesting as far as programming projects is to learn how to use some third-party API that you build on top of. So I can remember doing this for Google Maps when I was building some Android apps for fun uh, during a hackathon, and I thought this was really insightful. It was my first time uh, a few years, uh, many years ago, I guess at this point, um, where I was using the Maps API. So something I didn't have control of, but I could receive data from and then sort of visualize it on the map. And I thought that was really cool and eye-opening because then you're thinking about things like, what am I dependent on? How do I process this data? What format is it coming in? And again, that's something that's really common. And again, you're probably familiar with Maps uh, reading them and the types of data that you can get. So I think it's interesting to try to uh, build something with a third-party API. So Maps is a good one. I also use GitHub API. Those were two to come to mind. But again, think about what tools or services you're using. See if they have a public API that you can use and try to build something on top of it, even if it's simple. And I think that's sort of the point here. Just get interested in something, try to build something simple and have fun with it. There's lots of great resources. You can talk about them with folks um, or work on these projects with friends. And again, I think the overall goal is to just kind of look through this list, find something that looks interesting, remove the friction, or that is the barrier to entry to get it started, and just, again, have fun with it. So with that said, folks, I hope those are some encouraging projects for you to get started on and that you can think about working on. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter, just as long as you're trying stuff and having some fun and, again, trying to improve your skills over time. So with that said, I'd be really curious to hear what some of your favorite projects are that you've worked on in the comments below, or if you think that there's other ideas that are just awesome projects for maybe beginner, intermediate, or maybe expert level programmers, in your opinion, uh, that you'd like to share with the community. All right, folks, with that said, thanks for listening in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.